everyone. Welcome to week one of NR304 Lab. So this is where we're going to continue forward. We did head to chest in NR302, and now we're going to just keep adding on. This week in class, you will talk or you will learn about the abdomen and also the peripheral vascular system. So the main focus this week in lab will be the peripheral vascular system, primarily making sure that you feel confident with palpating all the major pulses, pulse sites in the body. Uh, also this week, if your lab teacher gets extra time, then you may go ahead and start learning the abdominal assessment since you already learned that content in class. Uh, but however, you may get checked off an abdomen this week, but you may not get checked off on it until next week. So first, let's go ahead and start out with the pulses. With the pulses in the body, remember the pulses are the locations of your major arteries because only your arteries have a pulse because they have that thicker muscular wall. Also, our pulses are protected in our body, which means that if you find a tendon, a ligament, or a muscle, typically you will find the pulse located close to that. So the first pulse that you will palpate bilaterally will be the temporal pulse. So the temporal pulse is going to be palpating that temporal artery, and it should be two plus bilaterally with a regular rate rhythm. The next one that you will do will be your carotid. Remember, your carotid pulse, you want to palpate one at a time, otherwise you cause your patient to be vasovagal or cause them to pass out. When you do the carotid artery, you want to make sure that if you're having a hard time finding it, have your patient grit their teeth. And sometimes when they grit their teeth, you can see their sternal mastoid muscle. When you see their sternal mastoid muscle, go just to the front and tucked up under the sternal mastoid muscle is often where you can find the carotid. And it should be two plus for the regular rate and rhythm. If it is bounding, you may say three plus. If it feels weak, then you would say one plus. Um, and so you'll want to review that scale that we learned in 302 and then we're going to refresh in 304. And then you'll do the other side. You will find two plus to the regular rate and rhythm. Then next you will go to the upper extremities. With the brachial pulse, if you look at that brachial tendon, that's that cinnamon rope-like tendon here. And if you go just to the side of it, underneath that tendon, you can feel the pulse. If possible, on your patient, you want to try to do both at the same time so that they have a to feel that two plus regular rate and rhythm bilaterally. If they have um, either wider arms or if they have thicker wall arms, you may have to do one at a time so that way you can press in deep enough. Uh, and that can be sufficient, but just verbalize that you would attempt to do it bilaterally. Then for your radial ulnar, if you can see my ligaments here, for your radial, your radial is going to be on the same side as your thumb. So think radials are radical. So if you go just to the side of that and feel for that radial pulse. On your patient, you would want to be palpating both at the same time. So feeling both and not using your thumbs, using your two fingers, two plus the regular rate and rhythm. And then you would go to your ulnar. So your ulnar is located on the opposite side, pressing down until you feel that beat. And again, you would attempt to do that with on your lab partner, on your patient, and you would want to feel two plus with a regular rate and rhythm. The next we're gonna to go to the lower extremities. So first you have your femoral pulse. The femoral pulse, because it is deeply located, oftentimes it's hard to palpate unless you have your patient externally rotate their leg. Oftentimes our patients don't know what external rotation is, so we will tell them, could you go ahead and frog leg your leg? So this one it is permissible to do one at a time because a lot of our patients don't have enough hip flexibility to externally rotate both legs at the same time. So you'll have them externally rotate one leg and you will feel as if you're going into the pocket. And so it's gonna be right along as if you're putting your hand in their pocket and press down deep enough until you feel that pulsation and it should be two plus the regular rate and rhythm. Then have them frog leg the other leg and feel it two plus the regular rate and rhythm. Oftentimes it is easier if they are lying flat and they frog leg so you may want to have your lab partner get into one of the hospital beds that way they can lay flat it can also be more difficult to palpate through very thick clothing. So oftentimes, like workout leggings can be easier to feel than on jeans. Then next you have the popliteal. So the popliteal is going to be located behind the kneecap. This one can be very difficult to find, but I still want you to attempt. And again, if you can feel that cinnamon rope like tendon behind the knee, then go just to the side of it. Oftentimes you will see people, um, especially if they have very developed leg like, muscles or if they have thicker lower extremities, then you may need to use two hands to try to press in. The attempt though, the goal is to do it bilaterally, and the hope would be that you would find two plus of the regular rate and rhythm. However, if you cannot find the popliteal, 
then, which often can be the case, especially if there's any lower extremity edema, go distally. Because if you can feel the pulses distally, then we're not as concerned that you can't find the popliteal because we know that blood flow is still getting past that point. So then the next ones that we have are the posterior tibialis. The posterior tibialis are going to be on the inside. So it's as if, if you're looking at my ankle, you're gonna wrap around the ankle on the inside and feeling behind that bone right here. So you're gonna go posterior and on the tibial sides on the inside and you wanna find two plus with a regular rate and rhythm. Then the last one we have is the dorsalis pedis. So the dorsalis pedis, if you can see this extensor tendon here, oftentimes it's located just to the side of that extensor tendon. So if you're having a hard time finding it, have your patient point their toe up and that'll help you see that tendon better and then oftentimes you can find it then. And you would want to feel two plus with a regular rate and rhythm bilaterally. But remember, every patient is different and every patient has different anatomy. So where some patients you might be able to feel it here, some you may have to feel higher up, some you may have to feel further down, some you may have to feel further into the middle. So get practice trying to find them on your lab partner, on yourself, on family members, and that's how you're going to get better at finding pulses. As I always say, pulses are an art. Trying to find them can be an art, and that helps me remember that pulses are also the locations of our major arteries. And that is it for the checkoff today. So again, that's your temporal, carotid, brachial, radial, ulnar, femoral, both sides, popliteal behind the knee, dorsalis, or sorry, posterior tibialis behind the ankle, and then dorsalis pedis on the top. Please let me know if you have any questions, and thank you very much, and we'll see you next week.